So hi guys, so I'm going to discuss paper 5 for October, November 2022, paper 52. Okay, question 1. Eggshell contains high percentage by mass of calcium carbonate, CaCO3. Student wants to find out what percentage of an eggshell is calcium carbonate using following method. This method uses a known excess, <laughs> sorry. This method, or this method uses a known excess of acid to dissolve the eggshell. The amount of unreacted acid is then determined by titration with alkali. Assume the acid only reacts with CaCO3 in the um, eggshell. Step 1. Wash empty eggshell with distilled water. Step 2. Warm the eggshell in an oven for a few minutes to dry. Grind, powder into, uh, grind the eggshell into powder. Weigh approximately 2 grams of eggshell powder into conical flask by using a balance which measures to 3 decimal place. Add 100 cm cube of 2 mole per dm cube hydrochloric acid into conical flask. Loosely cover with the conical flask. Uh, loosely cover the conical flask and leave for 2 days. Filter the contents of the conical flask with any rinsing to into a 24 are 250 cm cube of volumetric flask and top up to the mark using distilled water. Transfer 25 cm cube of solution prepared in step 7 into a conical flask. Add a few drops of thymol blue indicator and titrate against 1 mole dm cube NaOH using a 50 cm cube urine. The calcium carbonate in eggshell reacts with excess hydrochloric acid as follows. You can see the um, equation there. The excess acid reacts with the NaOH solution as follows. Okay, suggests how the student could confirm the eggshell is completely dry in step two. Reheat and reweigh until the mass of the eggshell is constant. Yeah, so once um, the mass does not change anymore, which means that all of the water has evaporated and it's only the eggshell. Next, state why the eggshell is made into a powder before making up the solution. It is to increase surface area to increase the rate of reaction. As we know, more surface area means a higher rate of reaction. I, I suggest why the solution is left for two days, sub six, before being used to make sure reaction is complete. And then student uses uh, 2.136 grams powdered eggshell to obtain results below. Um, for this one, to fill up the table, you just subtract the um, final burette with initial burette, and then you will get the titer complete table 1.1 so you will calculate the mean titer and you will pick um uh titration 1 and 3 because there's only 0 0.1 difference um and you will add them divide by 2 and you will get 16.25 as the mean titer and then I, I calculate the amount in mole of unreacted HCl in solution prepared in step 7. Show you're working. So I've copied the um, equation there. And then so you will get... It is said that you react the NaOH is 1 mole per dm cube. And then you are using, where is it there? And then it is said that you are using 16.25 um, cm cube. You will convert that into dm cube. And then you can use formula concentration equals to mole over vol. So you just, con uh, you just multiply 1 times... Um, 16.25 times 10 power of negative 3, you will get 16.25 times 10 to the negative 3 uh, mole of NaOH. And then now they want um, the hydrochloric acid. So 
this is number of moles of NaOH, you just have to uh, reference it into the hydrochloric acid. So you will do 25 cm cube over 250 cm cube. You get 0 0.1625. So there. I, I calculated the amount in mole of CaCO3 that of CaCO3 that reacts with the excess of acid. Use your answer to calculate percentage by mass CaCO3 in eggshell. Show you're working. Okay, so I've copy pasted the um formula or the uh, equation there. And then we know that in HCl, they use 100 cm cube of HCl, 2 mole per dm cube. And then so you can use um, moles reacted of HCl, you have to find first. Concentration equals to mole over vol, you can use that so you can just Multiply concentration with the volume. Don't forget to convert the cm cube into dm cube. You'll get 0 0.2 moles. And then so that is uh, for the total, the 0 0.2 moles is total HCl mole. And then you will uh, minus it with the uh, answer that you got in II, which is unreacted HCl. So 0 0.2 minus 0 0.1625, you'll get 0 0.0375. So that is moles of reacted HCl. And then you can get mole of CaCO3 using ratio, because you can see there in the equation, coefficient of HCl is 2, CaCO3 is 1. And so you can just divide that by 2, you can get 0 0.01875, that is the mole of CaCO3. And then they want percentage by mass. And so see you have to use the mole of CaCO3 um, and use mole equals to mass over MR formula. And so the MR of CaCO3, you can just look in the periodic table um, and you'll get 100.1. And so you can just multiply the number of moles that you found previously, 0 0.01875 uh, times uh, 100.1 to find x, which is mass. And so the mass is uh, 1.876875 um, grams. I wrote it in multiple decimal points um, just to be safe. And then percentage by mass. 1.876875 over 2.136 that is given in the question above times 100, it's 87.9%. So there you go. Page 4. C name suitable piece of um, apparatus that could be used to transfer 25.00 cm cube. Um, you have to pay attention to the number of decimal points. So 25.00 uh, cm cube. So it's volumetric pipette. In step four, a conical fast is weighed using a balance accurate to three decimal places and the mass is recorded. The actual is placed into conical flask and mass increased by 2.136 grams. Calculate percentage error in using mass of this actual. So actual mass is 2.136. Uh, 163 and then error we know that for error um, it is the last decimal point divided by 2 so um, for this specific one it is 0 0.0005 and then for to calculate percentage error you need to multiply it by 2 because there's initial and then there's the final mass so you will multiply it by 2 and then over 2.163 and then you have to multiply it by 100 but I forgot to put it there so just multiply it by 100 and you will get um, 0 0.0005 or 0 0.0468% that's your percentage error 
I'm just gonna explain the effect on the percentage by mass if the eggshell is not completely dried in step two. So percentage by mass will increase because mass of the eggshell will be higher than the true value. If eggshell is not completely dried, then the mass will be higher than the true value. So when you calculate percentage by mass, the denominator will increase while the numerator stays the same. So of course, your percentage by mass will be decreased because the denominator increase. And then the student repeats the method using the same apparatus. Apparatus is a 50 cm cube burette, but, but decides to use 0 0.10 mole dm cube of NaOH to reduce risk of uh, corrosion or damage to ice. Um, explain how this introduces a weakness to the experimental procedure. So here, I have calculated just for an explanation. If you are going to use 0 0.1 mole per dm cube, you would need to, um, you want the mole of NaOH to be the same. So the mole of NaOH is 16.25 times 10 power of negative 3. And so your volume will actually be 162.5 cm cube. And so um, you would have to use 162.5 cm cube of NaOH, which will not fit inside the burette as the burette only has um, volume of 50. It is possible to measure the rate uh, at which potassium manganate KMnO4 MR158 diffuses in uh, through permeable gel using following method. So you can see there, petri dish com training, uh, containing permeable gel, hole containing sample of aqueous potassium manganate. Step one, a petri dish is prepared with a permeable gel. Step two, a hole of diameter 0 0.5 cm cube is cut at the center of the permeable gel. Step five, or step five, step three, a sample of KMnO4 is placed into a hole um, at, and at the same time, stopwatch is started. After a few minutes, the diameter of color spot is measured. The diameter is measured every three minutes um, until there are three success, successive equal measurements. Okay, so you can see the data that the student obtained. And then it says here, plot a graph on the grid to show the relationship between diameter increase of color spot and time. And so basically you just have to, um, yeah. So basically you just have to plot the diameter increase and the time. So here I have placed the X and the Y read the graph. Um, so it says diameter increase, not diameter of the colored spot or the y-axis. And basically you just plot the points there. I've plotted it there and then draw a line of best fit. So for this one, it's actually curve. <laughs> and this is the first time I came across curve of best fit. Um, and the only, uh, and so yeah, basically just hit as many spots as you can and then yeah hit as many spots as you can and then on graph um circle point that you believe to be the most anomalous so i have circled this one here and this one is the one two three four five six seven the seventh one so one two three Four, five, six, seven. So it's eighteen and two point seven. To so circle it, and then suggest a possible explanation for this anomaly. Diameter is measured too early. Calculate gradient of your tangent. So there, um, I just pick two points and then, or I drew my tangent and then I um, pick the points. So I put it there. So here's my tangent. And then I used um, this point over here and then this point over here to calculate the tangent. I've recorded it here. 
the points and then the gradient so y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 and then uh, for d select appropriate data from table 2.1 to calculate average rate of diffusion so you have to use the ones on the end here um so you do 3.6 over 30 so you have to use that if they ask for average rate and then identify independent variable it's self-explanatory time f suggests how the experiment could be made to be more reliable so you just have to repeat the experiment to show that the readings are reproducible meaning that when you repeat the experiment the readings are basically the same for g another compound of potassium which is colored is potassium dichromate this compound is corrosive when aqueous it is possible to use method described early, earlier to determine rate of diffusion of potassium dichromate predict how the graph obtained of potassium dichromate would differ from uh, the one obtained by uh, potassium manganate explain your answer rate of diffusion is slower because mr of k2cr207 is heavier so gradient is less steep i think it's self-explanatory and then I, I, apart from the temperature, states one variable that must be uh, kept controlled when comparing rate of diffusion of uh, dichromate versus manganate concentration of K2Cr207 and KMnO4 used. Also self-explanatory. And then for H, I, other than wearing eye protection, state one safety precaution the student should take if they're using potassium uh, dichromate so it is stated that potassium dichromate is corrosive so you should wear chemical resistant gloves just in case it spills you will not get any burns um i i another student suggests that uh to compare rate of diffusion between dichromate and manganate it would be easier to place solid crystals of each of these compounds into the holes of the two petri dishes so so, uh, so just two practical problems this would cause so for the rate of diffusion salt would take uh, too long to diffuse to the gel and then insolubility crystals may not dissolve in the gel i think it's also very self-explanatory okay so that is the paper complete thank you for watching